Welcome back to DR Sports. Welcome back to Talking Tactics. The Premier League might have taken a break, but we don't because the FA Cup threw out, threw out plenty to analyse, to mm. look ahead to. It threw up a little bit of a... I don't know, a, a, a tester? Teaser, Go, trailer. A teaser, yes. yes. A, a trailer, I like mm. that, for the Premier League. <laughs> and of course, Casemiro got his two goals for Manchester United and Brighton. Well, they just keep firing. Doesn't matter if Casado is out the squad. Doesn't matter who they sell. Doesn't matter what they do. Yep. They just keep building and building. So we're going to explore Brighton's form as well. Matisse, very quickly, how are you doing? Pleasure, very good. Um, we had some good clashes, some interesting yep. results. So yeah, let's get into it. Some big games. Let's start with this one. I was there. Mm. Really keen to hear your thoughts on the game. Do you know what? It was one. Of, it was literally a trailer because it didn't give you too much, but yeah. it gave you enough to kind of talk about without going into a spoiler for for the games in the Premier League. Obviously, there was a few rotations for Arsenal, six changes, I believe, um, and you could you could see it in a way because even though it was very even, it was missing that cutting edge, that Odegaard, that yeah. someone you know to really. Um, kind of take advantage of the fact that City weren't really that great in the first half. I yeah. thought Arsenal were better. Um, but it just goes to show that even with six changes, I mean, five changes in the back line, new goalkeeper, you know, the, the, the chemistries that have been formed have you know, completely been taken out of the team. You still competed. You know, yeah. if, this is a, if this is kind of like a, a, an opportunity for Pep to get one over on Arteta or put some doubts on the title race in terms of, you know, momentum and, and mentality, he didn't accomplish that. One nil against yeah. a rotated team, party comes off, Lokonga goes in, and this is City's pretty much almost full strength team they didn't really impose themselves enough for, for it to have a massive effect. So, and then now you've got one less competition to play in. So I actually think it's almost advantage Arsenal. <laughs> I completely agree. It was all about that psychological impact. And you're right. How did we lose the game yet coming out feeling confident? I think you're right. I mean, when we go to the Etihad in April, you expect Turner, Tomiyasu, Holding, Tierney, Vieira, Nketiah and Trossard all to not be starting that mm. game because you would have Jesus, Martinelli, Odegaard, White, Saliba and Zinchenko and of course Aaron Ramsdale. That's not to say that the players that came in didn't do very well. I thought the battle between Holding and Haaland was really fascinating. Yep. I actually thought before the yellow card, Holding was winning it. Arteta rightly made the changes. Yep. But it was a tactically fascinating battle because you know the game ended with eight shots to City, five for Arsenal. This yep. was not you know, all action stuff from both teams. Both will know they could go up levels. But I think it was an opportunity for Man City to send a message. You know, they had the light show before, everything. I think they were trying to use this as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to just set a standard for Arsenal and say, look, if you want to win the Premier League, this is what you've got to get to. Yeah. And they didn't really do it, City. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting with City now that we've seen, obviously, the Cancelo news as well. Right, massive. Rico Lewis is... Again, as always, tucking into midfield, basically lining up next to Rodri, and, and that's yeah. your back three that automatically forms with um, Akanji in the middle, and then you've got Ake to the left and Stones on the right. But the very interesting thing about Ake is he's almost becoming, and you saw it for the goal, he's almost becoming the attacking outlet down yeah. that side. You would think that he would just slot in and just do the bare basics and stick to his job, but Ake is getting further forward more and more. He's not quite overlapping yeah. and, and, and giving you that real expansive play in his game, but he is at least stepping over the halfway line and trying to thread the ball in between the lines and trying to, and he got the goal, really good finish. Yeah. And Ake's been quietly very, very good for City um, for, for a lot of the season, especially in a team that's kind of had to rotate and go ebb and flow between different centre-backs. Obviously, yeah. Diaz is out injured, so I was very impressed with Ake, I have to say. He reminds me of the way Man City sort of do with their back four what Arsenal do with theirs but reverse so mm. Ake is the Ben White but who can overlap despite slotting into a back three yep. and Lewis is a Zinchenko but from right back who yep. comes into midfield yep. what I love about Arsenal in this game I've, got, I've, I mean, I've actually got photos I tweeted about it <laughs> was the way Arsenal went man for man and what I'm about to show Stones on the ball I've got a picture of it. I'll happily prove it to anyone. Obviously, for <laughs> broadcast reasons, we can't show. I'm not joking when this is how we press. Yeah. I mean, this is absolutely 100% true. Tommy Asu not as close to Grealish. You know, when Stones has a ball on that side, he's just kind of got an eye on him, but he's watching him. Mm. Holding as tight to Haaland as I've seen since that Son battle he lost in May, uh, end of last season. And Tierney was coming inside to follow De Bruyne wherever he went because we know how many times we talked about it, De Bruyne pulls out wide. Yep. And then Gabriel and Tommy Asu were just left to do a man marking job on the wide players. It was so open, but what Arteta said to his players, I actually trust you to win your battles. If you win your duels, you'll get the ball and it doesn't matter. And guess what? We're in our build-up shape. Yep. But if you get it wrong, you get absolutely torn apart. But yep. Arsenal didn't. They stood up to it. And, and we're, we're, as the season goes on, we spoke about it months ago, about this whole Haaland and more predictable and direct. Yep. De Bruyne is the key. Yeah. And he's, he's very up and down and there's some games where you're like, okay, great assist, but there's other games where you're like, mm, this isn't the same De Bruyne. If you cut the service to Haaland, yeah. 
Everybody keeps talking about it. What does Haaland bring to the game if you cut yeah. the service? He's not going to drop deep and start linking up play. He's not going to start chance creating and running channels. And he is whip for the penalty area, fox in the box. Yeah. So if you cut the supply, Holding's job is not so complicated anymore. It's just keep an eye on him. It's not, True. you know, his movement is very dangerous, etc. But cut the supply, cut the yeah. the incisive passes, and and you're and you're good to go. So. I was very impressed with the, the way that you actually approached it because it's very bold mm -hmm. and it is a lot of trust that you're given, especially to a back line that's been rotated. If you used to yeah. do this with Saliba, Ben White, that's a different conversation. But to do this with Holden, Holden was wearing the armband. I was yeah. shocked. I was like, is Holden really... I didn't want to be yeah. disrespectful. I, I, was like, I, loves it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is Holden really wearing the armband right now? Um, but he was solid. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I think for Man City, it was one of those things where they got the result in the end. Obviously, they, they kept pushing. They got their goal. But... There's a lot of positives to take from Arsenal and considering you've got to, you know, make the changes and, and, and rest a couple of players as well. Yeah, and so often we saw this pass just long from Ortega, just went, yeah. let's just try to hit Haaland. If he's got the one-on-one, -on -one, let's back him to win it. But holding, I thought, did really well up until that yellow card. Good yeah. to see Arteta tactically in game, recognising that. Yeah. As he took off Partey, you got a little bit less protection with Lukonga, not a natural six. Mm. OK, we'll bring in Saliba and try even it out. Mm. We did concede the goal. We'll look at that goal and actually talk about Man City and their improvement in the second half, because they did improve. I think a big part of it was actually just the way they decided to just get on the ball. They didn't really cause Arsenal too many problems in terms of, you know, chance creation. Yeah. But they just looked like masters of retaining possession once they went 1-0 up. Yeah, Zinchenko came on, there was a little bit of a boost, Martinelli did some things, but really we didn't trouble them in the second half either, yeah. and it just became a stalemate, which is what City would have wanted. If it feels like Pep at the moment is feeling the pressure in terms of he knows that he's the kind of one that has to charge up this team. Half time yeah. they come back out second half against Tottenham, charged. Yeah. First five minutes they're out like you know chaotic and they're moving the ball much quicker etc. Same with this game. As soon as they come out second half they start to zip the ball a bit better. Yeah. The crowd as well. People are talking about the stadium and, and, and in terms of the intensity obviously this is tactics but now we're talking more emotions. Until they get the goal most people are saying okay it's pretty quiet in it the stadium. Was. So I feel, Pep, honest, it was. I feel Pep's getting quite agitated because he's looking at his team and he's thinking I've got to motivate you guys you're yeah. not you're not motivated Cancelo's had to go out maybe mentally he's not ready I'm having to tell the fans you know let's let's motivate they haven't made any moves in the in the window I don't know if he wanted you know maybe a left back or something etc he hasn't yeah. got that and then on top of that the players as well he's almost having to say listen guys more than you can believe <laughs> so it's like it, it, I need you more than you can believe you know what yeah. I mean like it's, 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 like, it's like Pep's just like hold on a second yeah why do I have to do Every single department, I've got to rise everybody up. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, tactically, he's made his own mistakes at times, and maybe he is, you know, overdoing it. Some people say it's become a bit predictable, a bit narrow, etc. They're still trying to acclimatise to, to Haaland. But it's also a mentality thing. You can definitely see it in the City team. And they were very complacent against Southampton when they lost 2-0 in, yeah. the, in the other cup competition. That, again, is a mentality thing. So as much as they do look different without with Haaland and, and the changes to the Sterlings and the Jesus Sienchenko, I think... Zinchenko we're seeing as a leader, yep. He's, they're missing that. Fernandinho was always a leader as well and That's brought a little true. bit of bite to that midfield, they're missing yep. that. So they are losing a little bit of that maybe in the dressing room and, and they haven't replaced it or, or those players that they thought would step up to the plate haven't done so yet. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right and, and that's what I think the light show was all about as well at the beginning was trying to get everyone up, you know, the league leaders are in town, let's send a message and I think it maybe filters from what Guardiola was saying only a week ago after Tottenham. Mm. You are right to praise Ake on the goal um, because, you know, you look here, it's brilliant ball retention from Greeley and he slots it into Ake and then it's just a nice right-footed finish into the back of the net. Yeah. What I want to talk about on the goal though is this player's involvement. Let's highlight him in, where's the circle? Let's highlight him in yellow and it's Lukonga. He got quite a bit of criticism, um, mm. walked off the pitch. I've really touched on it a lot on AFTV and I don't want to sort of keep shining a light on him but I actually want to defend him here. A lot of people felt that he was too slow to kind of close him down. They were saying in build-up he should have done better to stop the shot from Alvarez at the post. <sighs> Hindsight's 2020. Yeah, it's brilliant. We can all say, oh, you should have been here because this ended up happening. Yeah. I can maybe say that Xhaka should have come across to Alvarez. Or if you're pressing well enough, you stop the pass into him in the first place. Yeah. When it comes to this bit here, I think this is a case of Arsenal fans. They love Saliba, you know, the, 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 the brand new toy. Everyone's excited. They want him to sign a new deal. But in reality, it's not great from Saka and Tommy Asu to let Grealish out of that spot. Mm. And it's not great of Saliba to get close and basically sort of turn his back and sort of shy away from it a little bit, not we associate with Saliba, who actually did really, really well against Haaland, but yeah. that wasn't great. And I feel to blame Lukong was a bit harsh because as well, if I just point to here, as that ball's coming into him, there's another player he's got to keep an eye on, and that's 
Gundogan. Gundogan. How many times exactly. have we seen Ake get the ball and roll it into a Gundogan or a Rodri? And so I feel for him. If he leaves that space vacant and he comes to get Ake, yeah. who's on his weaker foot, no one's really expected Ake to slot that in on his weaker foot exactly. into the far corner. So there's a little bit of, you know, in game you kind of have to think about, okay, there is dangerous situations here, but what's the probability of this? What's the probability of that? The probability yeah. of him slotting it to Gundogan and him slotting it home is much higher. So I can understand the the kind of, you know, not sure what to do situation. And like you said, there's other players involved yeah. there that could get out to him, like a Saliba. Yeah. Um, so I do think it is a bit unlucky. I think Lokonga, he's an easy target at the moment. And I think yeah. he is playing out of position. When he's coming on and he's playing as that holder, yeah. saw him play a wonderful pass out for Saka, lo lovely switch of play, but defensive positioning is not his thing. We spoke no, about agreed. it when you went to Old Trafford and you lost and he didn't make any tackles that game statistically. That's not his game. Yeah. So when he's young and he's developing and he's playing out of position in a team that everybody's flawless and he's obviously going to make mistakes, it is a bit difficult for him, I can get it. Completely agree. Let's talk about Brighton, um, another brilliant win. And look, let's not shy away from it. They've got their issues off field with the Caicedo rumours, the 60 and 70 million pound bid from Arsenal, but they responded. Pascal Gross has done a job as a right back to come into midfield. Mm. You've got Tarek Lamptey now starting a right back, a really exciting talent. You'll know him well from yeah. his uh, short time as a Chelsea first teamer. Yeah. He did uh, actually have a very impressive uh, appearance at the Emirates Again, in, a, yeah. in a Chelsea shirt. Um, but I just, I'm not really saying anything that no one's saying at the moment, but I just have so much admiration for Brighton and the way that they're responding. And when you look at this team, the thing I find tactically fascinating about them is they play possession-based football, high intensity, but they actually do it in a 4-2-3-1. Yep. It's still a five-man midfield, or, or let's say a three in midfield with Gross, McAllister and Welbeck. But actually, sometimes it'll be Lallana instead of Welbeck, whoever. You don't really see traditional tens or, or like a front two anymore. Yeah. Arsenal will press with a, with a two with Odegaard. You might get... Man City, De Bruyne, De Bruyne, Bruyne yeah, more yeah. so recently, but yeah. even just right. Mason Mount for Chelsea as yeah. well a lot of the time. But it feels like threes are more, are more made up of a six and then two either side. Yeah. They really do play with a Kalisa tucked into a Casado or a Gross and then a ten floating in that space. And yeah. They're playing brilliant football and, and I just love watching them. Mm. And I have to highlight, uh, highlight uh, Mato uh, Matoma, yeah. Matoma because... This guy, what did he cost? 3.5 million. He yeah. got his doc, uh, PhD, PhD. People are saying PhD in dribbling. He did. <laughs> uh, Unbelievable. And, and he's literally, he's been a revelation. You know, he's really been a revelation. And as a player, I was watching him the whole game. And regardless, even the goal was coming from him in terms of, you know, when a player just deserves that break. Yeah. He was one of those players. He didn't just pop out of nowhere. It's a wonderful outside the right boot um, pass that he played earlier on in that game as well from the left. Yeah. The previous fixture for the same two teams, he was absolutely cooking um, Trent yeah, all game. Re and that's a Trent that was actually starting to pick up a bit of confidence defensively, show a bit more awareness and, and a lot more um, resistance in terms of defensive duels and, yeah. and recoveries and whatnot. And I think that is an instruction from Klopp because of that midfield caving in a lot more. And he's obviously changed it up now with um, the new young Bajatik in midfield, I believe, Spanish um, young 18 year old slash Serbian but Liverpool are still being exposed a little bit and Matoma again just quality and that yeah. goal that he scored with the touch and the composure in tight areas and it was kind of like a flashback to what Welbeck did to the same Gomez oh yeah same situation oh yeah and I forgot that happened like two weeks ago yeah when it happened I was like if this was anybody else, I would I would be trolling trolling yeah. them to the nth degree. Now I, I I knew Gomez personally when I was younger, so it's, oh, it stings oh, a little okay, bit. Fine. But there are jokes made that yes. you know every time he goes to Brighton, they send him back to Lewisham, and that yeah. is exactly what is happening right here with that goal. They have carbon copy, flicked over the head, sold him the dummy, um, and it was what Brighton deserved. I think Liverpool actually competed in this game a lot more. We remember covering the, the three 0 yeah, They did not compete one, at all. Yeah. They were not in the game. But again, Liverpool, even though they are competing, there's still fundamental issues yeah. in that team. And again, I don't get this whole front line of, of Gakpo in the middle, Elliot on the left and Salah down the right. I know Elliot got his goal, but that was coming in from the right, I believe. He was, he was <laughs> leading down the middle. When Salah's got the ball, it's Gakpo wide. And the ball, if we just add a little ball, is threading behind to Elliot and he yeah. gets in and puts it away. And you that know, it, it makes was, more sense. Yeah. Well, at least as, a, as like a diamond... Yeah, even two. Elliot as maybe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Something like that yeah, because, makes a little more sense. Because Liverpool fans always tell me that Elliot's more of a 10. Yeah. I don't really know Elliot's best position. I've seen him come off the right. Yeah. I've seen him play um, on the left now and sometimes in midfield. Now, we know defensively he's not trusted enough to play in a midfield three, or at least they don't feel like he's going to do his defensive duties enough, especially with all the issues they have. If they had two proper defensive-minded double pivot players, not a Thiago, maybe he could survive in there. But off the left, I'm just 
thinking that his options are a bit limited and maybe if you moved him across and even Salah, his chance 1v1 came centrally when he missed that 1v1 as yeah. well. Gakpo is not playing well at the moment. Salah yeah. is also not being great at the moment as well. But I just feel like Gakpo at the moment, as much as people are trolling him and, and maybe he's not going to be cut out, who knows, it's early days. But at least play him in his strongest position. Early yeah. days, early doors, he's playing out of position and poorly. It's not good for his confidence. And they're very top heavy on the left with Gakpo. Nunes prefers to drift out to Diaz, the left. Diaz, Diaz, Jota. Yeah. So we'll, very interesting to see how Klopp approached this, especially when he's got his players back fit. I think a real knock for Liverpool was that, will be that they went, yeah, sure, Brighton went full strength yeah. pretty much, but they really did go with the team that Klopp trusts the most and they mm. lost again. Yeah. Um, just back on Matoma as well, very quickly. I love him. I mean, that goal is pure confidence. Yeah. It's pure... What I love is the purpose in his first touch. Yeah. So that, that, you see it there, you know, his touch is to bring him, you know, it's to send the defender flying, open himself an angle and put it into the roof of the net. Yeah. But if, do you remember that goal he scored against Everton about a week or two ago where mm. Zaccio Caicedo, who played a lovely switch ball out to him, sort of one of those bouncing ones, not, it was not, not quite a switch ball, but across the, the grass. And Matoma's first touch takes him away from the defender that's coming to press. Mm. All of these, these first touches, these little things, it's pure confidence. It's, it's ability and it's brilliance and all that. Mm. But it's as well he's got the confidence to go, I'm loving my football right now. I love what I'm doing. And every first touch can have a purpose. I'm not going to take a touch, wait for the defender to come and then try beat him. He's actually got the tools to do that as well, Matoma. Yeah. But he's trying to be as efficient as possible, be as direct. I'm not surprised he did a dissertation in <laughs> dribbling because you learn so much just watching him and the way he approaches it. Mm. I think he's superb. No doubt a £100 million bid will come in in the summer. Um, but right. And, <laughs> you know, I, and, and that's the sad thing. It's but, almost like they, they almost need the players to stop doing yeah. so well. Could you not be could so you actually, good? Could you not make it so clear that you have this ability because we've only just signed you and it's, yeah. you know, it's meant to be a thing that you know, gets better and better as the years goes on. Um, it's true. No Casado in that team and, and no problems. No, exactly. Let's have it well. You'd hope that bode well for Arsenal, but we'll wait and see. <laughs> um, obviously, when the, with the recent incomings, we haven't even got Mato over there because I think they signed him a couple of years ago. 3.5, and then 25 loaned him out. Sent him out loan, right. Yeah. But some of the incomings they've had, Casado for around 4 million, Kukurea for around 15 plus, uh, Abdelassima, I remember him doing really well in the opening against Arsenal. He's yeah. out on loan, getting good football. I'm sure he'll be ready for next season. It's stupid young Gilmore and Colwell on, on loan. And again, two players, well, actually three with Kukurea, I think you'll know very well. <laughs> but look at some of the outgoes. Kukurea for 60 plus, pursuit for 25 plus Trossard for over 25 Mopai White for 50 and Dan Byrne for 10 plus million they are responding brilliantly you lose a left footed centre half we'll get in a left footed centre half you know they are just so good yeah. at because you know Kukurea out cool we'll get a stupid yan in you know they just know what they're doing they're you know, Basuma Gilmore and I just have so much admiration for the way they conduct their business and you know, someone rightly said on Twitter, instead of signing Casado, why don't we sign the guy that Brighton are trying to replace him with? Yeah. And it's such a good, you know, it's such a good point. There's jokes and made and they're so accurate. You know, you take a player from Brighton and they'll just go and replace him with a Venezuelan under 23 or whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's just, there's, there's just no stopping them right now from a recruitment standpoint. They're just getting everything right, smashing it out of the park. Yeah. And I think, We've tried to steal their recruitment team. We have. Yeah. We've taken their manager. You've taken a couple of players. We've taken a couple of players. We yeah, went yeah. in a little bidding war for this. It seems yeah. like you guys are going to stick the course a little bit longer. Well, we'll see. There's, there's a person called Bloom yeah. at Brighton who Casado's agency apologised to in their statement for their leaving party, which, which hasn't actually happened yet. <laughs> now, yeah. someone needs to talk about him, Bloom. Oh. I think he might be the man with the system, with the database, with all of the technology and all of that. Because we got to, If we're going to keep going to them, let's let's go to the source. I, I always say bring we're taking we're taking the fruits, brilliant. but we're not we're not finding out where the soil is, where the where the where the nutrients mean. are. You know, we need to teach a man to fish. That saying, do you know what I mean? So let's, well, let's, you've hired everyone else from Brighton. I'm surprised you didn't bring him in. But um, <laughs> no, they're doing fantastic stuff. Let's end the show by talking about Man United and Casemiro. And mm. um, what I've got here is his defensive midfield stats. McTominay and in brackets 21-22 season this is Premier League uh, per 90 but their percentile ranking so where they rank the closer to 100 they are the better they are performing in the league yep. with their defensive midfield counterparts now Casemiro's numbers some really impressive ones what I find so fascinating about Casemiro this whole debate about whether he's the best defensive midfielder in the league mm. up for debate yep. I don't believe that myself I believe he's absolutely one of them I believe he's world class I believe mm. he's amazing United fans, that's not enough for you, then I don't know what to say. I always say in, in football tribalism is very important in these conversations. Yeah. If it's very, very close, just go with your guy. 
Yeah. <laughs> Completely agree. <laughs> Why not just back your yeah, gut? Yeah, you may as well just back your gut. I agree. <laughs> if you look at some of his numbers, I mean, he blows McTominay out of the water for most things, you know, tackles, interceptions, blocks, long passes, passes to the final third, passes received and progressive passes. When you compare him to Roger and Partey, very interesting. As you'd expect, some of these defensive numbers, much, much better than the percentile rankings of Roger and Partey. Mm. But again, Man United tend to do more defensive do, yep. uh, jobs across the 90. Rodri and Partey and teams that like to progress and keep the ball as their way of killing games. Yep. But then when you look at so the sort of passing stats, look, they're not miles off it. He's much closer to them than he is to McTominay last season. Long passes. I mean, Rodri's just an absolute master, <laughs> yep. isn't he? But Partey as well, some very impressive numbers there. And you've just got three fantastic DMs. I mean, even Fabinho would make the fourth if it weren't for his form recently. Yeah. Um, well, you can see what massive up upgrade Casemiro has been. And by having that crucial six, that's much closer to what Rodri and Partey are doing. United are climbing the table pretty much in a Carabao Cup final. Going to go far in the FA Cup and yeah. having a really impressive season. They're all three very complete sixes. Yeah. Press resistant, able to switch play. If you need them to carry it, take a couple shots from distance. We've seen them all blast it from range at times as well. Yeah, yeah, and true. like you said, the tackling numbers are purely because of possession and, and who's sure. dominating you know, the, the games more in terms of that. And what I'm looking at is not even the comparison between the three, because I think they're all having brilliant seasons. Rodri, of course, has got the respect to the Premier League from years past. Party yeah. is in, in, in ridiculous form and Casemiro has done what he's done continentally. Um, yeah. McTominay... <laughs> That, that's the type of upgrade you're looking at. I mean, yeah. he, he just doesn't have the capacity, the facilities, as they say, to do what these guys are doing. And that's, yeah. that's why Casado's costing, you know, 80 million. That's why Enzo Fernandez is costing the release clause. Clubs right. are starting to understand now that when you add a six, when you add someone that can be the foundation for your midfield and allow everybody else to express themselves, and they can give you maybe some goals here and there as well on top of that and give you the extra stuff that you don't yeah. even ask. That is more important these days than a striker. Yeah. You guys don't have a world-class striker. True. Man United don't have a world-class striker. Man City do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, the striker is, it can ebb and flow right now. It's, it's, it's just the way football is. It kind of goes with trends and, yeah. and, and whatnot. But this sixth position, it is by far make or break for a lot of teams. And we're seeing that. Liverpool have seen that with Fabinho's drop-off. Yeah, so these are, the, these are the new guys that you have to pay big money for. And you can cheap out in other areas. Do you know what, Matisse? That is such a good point. I mean, we knew it, but you said it out loud. I'm like, you're so right. It is the addition of those key players that makes everything tick. You've got good, good, good ball-playing centre-backs. Yep. Give them a holding midfielder that can receive off them. You've got good forwards, runners like Rashford, whatever. Give them a holding midfielder that can distribute to them and get the best out of them. Yep. There's a reason Bruno Fernandes is in his best form in two years. There's a reason Eriksen slotted in so easily. And Casemiro has been absolutely brilliant. Newcastle so as well, Bruno Guimaraes. Oh, is another one. It's another great example. It's another great yeah, it's another example. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely spot on. All right, let us know in the comment section. Who's the best DM in the league? <laughs> Who's the best DM in the world? Well, yeah. I'll let you fight it out. But um, look, three supremely talented players. Obviously, McTominay adding squad depth to United there. And he does do a job. I thought he did OK at the Emirates defensively. But you can see one upgrade Casemiro has been. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much it. Let us know who you think is going to win the FA Cup. Let us know what you made of that Man City-Arsenal game. Was that... A little bit of a psychological blow for City despite actually winning the game. I know it sounds crazy, but if you watch the game, then you'll understand what we mean. Big thanks to Matisse, as always. Go check out his channel. And of course, we'll be back on DR Sports very, very shortly. All the content coming out, all the clips, you check it all out. And yeah, Premier League resumes this weekend.